Exodus 3 and verse 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Uh, to give you a little bit of background of the story here, in our study this past week of the Word, we saw that Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers, and then he ended up in Potiphar's house. He was uh, bought by Potiphar, and in Potiphar's house, uh, there was such favor upon Joseph that Joseph, everything that he set his hand to, everything that he did was prosperous, it succeeded. And so then Potiphar recognized the grace and the favor of God and that the Lord's hand was upon Pot uh, uh, Potiphar's house and everything that he owned because of Joseph. And so he, of course, set him over everything and to the point that he didn't, didn't even know the things that he owned or things that he had because Joseph was taking care of it. And so God raised him up through the favor of God. God raised him up in Potiphar's house. Then we saw that Potiphar's wife desired uh, to have sex with uh, Joseph and wanted him to lie with her. But he refused and he ran from the house. And then she lied concerning it. And uh, Potiphar, of course, was angered because he thought Joseph was trying to uh, seduce his wife. And then he... Uh, threw him in prison, but even in prison, Joseph, because of the favor of God upon his life, he was raised up as a leader in the prison, and he was overseeing all that occurred even in prison because of God's favor. Then the butler uh, had a dream and uh, that was in prison, and, and Joseph interpreted the dream, and then the butler got out of prison, was serving Pharaoh, and uh, he forgot about Joseph, but then uh, when Pharaoh had a dream, and none of his wise men, none of his magicians could interpret the dream, uh, the butler remembered that Joseph was able to interpret dreams. So Pharaoh called for Joseph. Joseph interpreted uh, Pharaoh's dream, and the dream basically was that there would be uh, seven years of plenty, and then there would be seven years of famine. And so Joseph, being the wise man that he was and uh, anointed by God and the grace of God upon his life and the favor of God upon his life, Pharaoh recognized the hand of the Lord and the favor of God upon him and asked him to oversee uh, the project of taking care of this situation. And so uh, Joseph, of course, took care of that. And for seven years, they stored the grain and stored the food. And, and so when the famine came, they were prepared. So God really was uh, preserving lives because he showed the Pharaoh and then showed Joseph. And that preserved the Egyptians, but it also preserved the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, we know that Jacob sent his sons, the brethren that had actually sold Joseph into slavery, uh, uh, Jacob sent his sons to go buy food from Egypt. Well, then uh, Joseph uh, recognized who they were and did not reveal himself initially, but later on he revealed himself to his brethren and forgave them. Well, then here, Jacob, he sent for Jacob, and uh, the family came, and people came from, uh, from Israel. They came to uh, Egypt, and they uh, lived in the land of Egypt. Well, then Pharaoh died, and the Pharaoh that was ra raised up did not remember Joseph. It said that he had forgotten Joseph. He, he didn't remember Joseph. He didn't know him. He knew not Joseph. Well, then... Uh, these children of Israel became slaves, or they came under Egyptian bondage, and they began to have them work and labor, but they did not pay them. They did not reward them for their labors. So what happened was that God raised up a man, Moses. He spoke to Moses. Remember, he spoke to Moses. Uh, first of all, we understand that his mother uh, hid Moses in the river until uh, Pharaoh's daughter saw him there, found the child, and wanted to take the child in. Now remember that all of the firstborn were, were killed by the Pharaoh. 
He had them all killed because the children of Israel were multiplying so greatly, and he didn't want them to overcome him. So he had the babies killed. Well, Moses was preserved by God's grace and his mother's faith by hiding uh, Moses in the river. And then his sister, Moses' sister, saw this occur because she was watching uh, the baby. And she told him she would go get a nurse to nurse the child. Well, she went and got Moses' mother, and Moses' mother nursed the child and obviously talked to Moses about who he was. And so Moses grew up with a knowledge of who he was. And he recognized that he was called to lead the people of God out of Egyptian bondage. Now, at one point, he tried to take that into his own hands. He saw an Egyptian uh, that was hurting one of the children of Israel, and he killed the Egyptian. And so he hid the Egyptian, and then later two of the Israelites were arguing among themselves and fighting among themselves, and he tried to break them up, and he said, well, you kill me like you did the Egyptian. Well, of course, that struck fear in Moses because he knew that someone else knew what he had done, and they were exposing him. So he feared for for his life. He ran, and he hid for 40 years, and of course, he was married and so forth, and he did well where he was, but yet... He still had a call of God upon his life. And so God spoke to Moses in a burning bush. You remember the bush burned and God spoke to him through that burning bush. The angel of God spoke to him and the bush was not consumed. And God spoke to him regarding him being the deliverer of the children of Israel that he was to go to Pharaoh and that he was to tell them that I am has sent me. And God is the great I am. So Moses goes to Pharaoh and he speaks to him regarding the children of Israel in the, in the, uh, as a prophet of God. And he said, let my people go that they may serve me. That was God's word to Pharaoh. Let the people of God go that they may serve God. And so Pharaoh hardened his heart, refused to let him go initially. And we know that there were uh, ten plagues that came upon the Egyptians as a result of Pharaoh hardening his heart. And so then uh, after the ninth plague, there was the tenth plague was that the firstborn of Egypt died. Remember that God said to the children of Israel, put the, uh, kill a lamb, a, a lamb for every family and shed the blood of a lamb. Put the blood on the doorposts and the lintel of your houses. Eat the lamb with your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, ready to go. And they put the blood on their houses. They ate the lamb and they, uh, the blood was a token upon their houses so that the death angel would not access their home and the firstborn in their house would not be killed. So all of the Egyptian firstborn was killed, but those in the, in the house of the children of Israel with the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of their homes was not killed, was preserved. Well, so God really, actually what happened was the thing that Pharaoh had sown is what he reaped. He had killed the firstborn of the children of Israel, and now his firstborn was dying. If he had went ahead and let the people of God go, it wouldn't have had to occur. But he reaped what he sowed because he hardened his heart and rebelled against God and against the prophet of God, against Moses and against the children of Israel. Now then, once this occurred, he finally said, go. Took him a while, but he got the message. He had the frogs, he had the flies, he had the locusts, he had, he was, you know, the people were tired of the flies, tired of the locusts, tired of, you know, the locusts were eating up their land, and and so, and then the uh, rivers turned to blood, and the fish died, and it was stinking, you know, it wasn't a good day. And so, but finally, when the firstborn uh, died in their houses, he finally said, go. And so, Moses is leading the children of Israel. But actually, God had given some other instruction to Moses, and that's where we pick it up here in verse 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. I will give them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. 
So one of the things that they were instructed to do was to borrow from their neighbors jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. So then most ladies would like this verse. I mean, you would appreciate some jewels and some gold and, you know, when you're leaving Egypt. And God wants to bless our lives and give us favor. Now, they were slaves in a strange land. They had worked and labored. They had built the Egyptian uh, uh, buildings. They had built for the Egyptians. They had labored, but they had not received uh, a reward, or they had not received their pay. But God always has a payday. I said, God always has a payday. There is a reward for obedience. Amen? And so, even though they were not paid and the Egyptians did not reward them appropriately and they were in slavery to the Egyptians, God was watching out for them. And the Scripture says that God saw their affliction and God heard their cries. And so, their afflictions were seen by God and God heard their voice as they cried out to God. God sent Moses to deliver them from Egyptian bondage. And thank God, God sent Jesus to deliver us from the bondage of sin and Satan in this world and the destruction and the affliction. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. See, God has delivered us from the hand of the enemy, and we should every day thank God for His favor and His grace and His goodness toward us. How many are thankful? today for the goodness of God towards you. So Moses was sent by God, and these Egyptians had favor toward. In the sight of the Egyptians, these children of Israel had favor. Now let's go over to chapter 11. Now prior to this time, they didn't have favor, but now God is giving them supernatural divine favor. Exodus chapter 11 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt, and afterwards he will let you go hence. When when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people. So God speaking to Moses said, Speak in the ears of the people. So it's important for people to hear The word of the Lord. Now, when you come to church, you're not just there for religious duty. You're there to hear the word of the Lord. God has a word for you. Praise God. Now, he has a written word that we must hear by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit reveals that to us. And we, God says that he gives us ears to hear, but also there is prophetic words as well. And I believe that one of the things the Lord has said to us recently is that this is a year of favor and unlimited blessing A year of favor and unlimited blessing so you can expect this year to be your year of favor and unlimited blessing. You may not have gotten your payday yet. And payday is not all always on Friday with God. And it's not always on the 1st and the 15th or on the 1st of the month. But God pays very well. Hallelujah. And the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land, and God makes sure that your payday comes. If you stay faithful to God, and if you make sure that you are doing His will, I can assure you that God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love, your work of faith. Praise God. When you obey God, then He will make sure blessing comes to your life, and you can expect payday to come. Hallelujah. How many believe your payday is coming? Hallelujah. I believe this year is payday year. Amen. This is a year of favor and unlimited blessing. God in one day can turn your whole life around. I say God in one day can turn your life around. Some people are waiting for the lottery and they're waiting to hit it big, but I can tell you God in one day can turn your life around and it doesn't have to be through the lottery, but the favor of God can rest upon your life. He can put you in the right place at the right time with the right person and it can turn some things around for your life and put you on a trail, on a track, on a path of blessing, and God's blessing can pour out on your life. One day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor. Hallelujah. If you will just obey God, God's favor will rest on you. 
when it seemed like there was no way through, when it seemed like they weren't coming out of bondage, that they were going to die in a place of slavery. Thank God that God sent a, a, a man of God. God sent someone, Moses, to speak into their life, and they were to hear the word of the Lord. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor. The margin in my Bible says that they were to ask as a gift. So this was not a one-night loan. This wasn't a, a week loan. You know, even the uh, Hollywood stars, sometimes they rent jewelry just for one night, one special occasion, so that they look the best, you know, and they're standing out in the crowd. And, uh, but God wasn't asking them to borrow it just for a night or for a week. No, he said, ask it for it as a gift right before you leave with your staff in your hand, your shoes on your feet, eat the lamb, and you leave out of here and take it with you. Ask it as a gift. And they had favor with the Egyptians. Praise the Lord forever. Now, what happened here? The Lord gave them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So sometimes you got to get in people's presence to receive the favor that God wants you to have. And God can get you in their presence. And God can give you favor. And God's favor on you, when you have favor in the sight of people, and this was the Egyptians. Now, if they were in slavery, and they were in a strange land, and they were a people of a different race and a different culture, and yet God gave them supernatural favor, I believe God can give you supernatural favor. Hallelujah. God can position you, and he can place you in front of people that the favor of God could be on your life, and they would recognize God's hand upon you. They may not understand it. They not, may not have the words to describe it, but God's favor is on your life. And they had favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. NIV translation said, the Lord made the Egyptians favorably, favorably disposed toward the people. They had favor toward them. Now, if this is a year of, of favor and a year of unlimited blessing, then I believe God can give you some relationships, and they don't always have to be. Listen, your business relationships are not always with Christians. Now, we appreciate Christian businesses and people that have businesses and they hire Christians, but not all of your business dealings are not going to be with Christians. So in your business dealings, God can give you favor with a secular world. God can give you favor on your job. God can give you favor in your business. If you're doing business deals, I believe when you go in, if you're a salesperson, when you go in, you have divine favor. And you get in there and they just want to buy it. Now, you may be a good salesman, you may be talented, but thank God there's more than just your talent. There's more than just your skill. Amen? Now, you want to be the best at whatever you do. You want to develop your skills. You want to develop uh, what God has given you, and you want to be the best at what you do that you can be. But at the same time, it's more than just what you can do. It's the favor of God. Understand, they couldn't get themselves out of this bondage. You may not be able to get yourself out of debt, but God can get you out of debt. Hallelujah. I said, but God can get you out of debt. You may not know how to get out, but God has a way out. There's always a word from God to you. And I believe this is a word from God to you. If you'll receive it, that this is a year of favor and unlimited blessing, and you get this in your heart and get it in your mouth. I believe God can bring you out of debt. God can put you in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. And you can find yourself blessed, hallelujah, every day of your life. Somebody say, my payday, my payday. Is, here. is here. Say it again. One more time. My payday is here. When? This year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he gave them favor. Moses was a great man in the sight of the Egyptians. Now let's go to chapter 12 of Exodus as well. Exodus chapter 12. In this chapter is where they put the blood on the doorposts and the lintel of their homes. They ate the lamb. Shoes on the feet, staff in the hand, ready to go. Tomorrow we're out of here. Verse 35, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. 
And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. The children of Israel did according to the word of what? Moses. Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 says, Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. If you believe his word, you'll be established. If you believe his prophets, you'll, be, uh, you'll prosper. And so when you believe the written word, you're established in God. And when somebody speaks the word of the Lord to your life and you receive it, it'll cause prosperity to come to your life. In every case here, as we've read these scriptures, we find in Joseph's life that with favor came prosperity. When he was in Potiphar's house, when he was in prison, when he was in, uh, under Pharaoh's uh, direction, in each case, the favor of God brought prosperity to his life. Now, obviously, he was a diligent man. He was a wise man. He paid attention to detail. He took care, care of business well, but also favor was upon his life. Now, if you can put the two together, if you'll be diligent, if you'll be wise, if you'll uh, deal with business wisely, and you'll take care of uh, uh, the details, and you'll take care of the business, I believe that God will raise you up, and his favor will rest upon your life. So in Joseph's life, favor brought blessing. In the children of Israel's lives, favor brought prosperity and blessing, didn't it? But it says the children of Israel did according to the word of the Lord. So it is not enough just to hear the word of the Lord. Remember, God said to Moses, speak now in the ears of the children of Israel. They, he was to speak the word, but it takes people hearing the word and our prayer should be, God, give me ears to hear what the Spirit of God says unto the church. You see that again and again in the book of, the, of Revelation. Ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, by the Holy Spirit, speaks through your pastor. God, by the Holy Spirit, speaks through other ministry gifts that come into the church to speak into your life. And if you have ears to hear what the Word of the Lord is to you, then what happens is faith comes to your heart. Now, faith is to be acted upon. So it's not enough to hear the word. We must do the word. What does it say? The children of Israel did according to what? The word of Moses. When you hear the word and you act upon the word, James says if you hear the word and you don't do it, you're like a man who deceives himself. A deceived person does the same thing thinking things are going to change. Insanity is to continue to do the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. And if you do the Word, then it changes your life. But if you don't act upon the Word, you become self-deluded. You hear the Word. You may even quote Bible verses. But if you don't act on the Word, then it doesn't produce results in your life. In this case, they could have heard the Word and said, That sounds like a good idea, Moses but never gone to their neighbor's house. I sure would like some of you ladies, you sure would like some of that jewelry. But you got to get up. You've got to face the intimidation. you got to face perhaps the inferiority. Perhaps on your job, you're, you're, you're endeavoring to get a promotion and you got to face the inferiority. Or perhaps you're going to uh, uh, apply for a job. you got to face the inferiority seemingly, even if you're in a strange land, even if it's a little strange to you. Maybe the person that you're talking to is not your race. Your race is not your favor. Your favor is with God. Hallelujah. They don't have to be your race. These people were not their same race. They didn't, they didn't have natural favor, but they had God's favor. Hallelujah. So you walk in there with the confidence and assurance that God's favor is upon your life. If they've liked anybody today, they're sure going to like you. Hallelujah. Praise God. If they favored anybody today, they're sure going to favor you. Why? Because God's favor. I said, shake off intimidation. I'm telling you, shake off inferiority. You are a child of the living God, and God has made you his own righteousness, and he has accepted you, and he has given you favor, and God has made you his very own child. Hallelujah. So you go in there as a representative of heaven, as a representative of God, just like Moses had to go in before Pharaoh with the boldness and the confidence, not cocky. Remember, you're looking a job. You need to know how to approach 
authority, right? Know how to approach authority, but with confidence. Some of you have probably watched American Idol, and some of those people are a little overconfident. God help them. I mean, they are overly confident. And they just tell them, you can't sing. And they get all mad. Listen, the man said, you can't sing. And it don't matter how many curse words you use and how many bleep, beep, 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 how many things you say, you're not going to Hollywood. So we're not talking about some false security here. We're talking about reality, yet God's reality overtaking your own natural reality and God's grace and God's favor and believe that God is at work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure and the favor of God is on your life and God is promoting you and promotion doesn't come from the east or the west but promotion comes from the Lord and God is on your side working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Say, I don't know the right people, Pastor. You know the right man if you know Jesus, if you know God, and if you know God's favors on your life. If you know who he is and he knows who you are and you're in a right relationship with God, then God can put you in the right relationships with people that you need. God got, listen, God got Joseph out of prison and he's in front of Pharaoh, but it says he shaved before he went in there. Why? Because the Egyptians shaved. They didn't have facial hair. So he was conscientious of the culture. And he went in there and he was clean and shaven and ready to walk in. And he walked in and God gave him divine favor. But the wisdom of God was in his heart. Can you hear me? So when you go certain places, you got to dress certain ways. You know, it's it it quite interesting. This, I saw this girl on television one time. She wanted to meet the president, and she had flip-flops. And, you know, I don't think I would dress with flip-flops and ragged jeans to go meet the president. Come on. You dress appropriately. If you want favor, some people will look at you and say, Now, if you dress whatever kind of way here, we, we're not, we receive you. We're not looking at you that way, but I'm not the president. <laughs> and the ambassador's at the door. They're not the president. But when you go meet the president, you want to look. I mean, you know, can you see a soldier meeting the president, and he shows up without his uniform? No, he's going to dress in his uniform. And what happens when he dresses in his uniform? president recognizes who he is, and he favors him. Do you follow me? And so God favors your life. I said God's favor in your life, and sometimes you got to do certain things to receive favor, but know that God's favor is on you. It's more than what you do in the natural. It's some supernatural favor. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I have favor. I have favor. Say, I'm blessed. And highly favored. Say it again. I'm blessed and highly favored. One more time. I'm blessed and highly favored. Glory to God. Verse 36. The Lord gave the people favor. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. Praise the Lord for his goodness. So it's coming your way. The Holy Spirit spoke it to me this way. He said, when you follow the plan and the purpose of God, there is favor for you on that path of obedience. When you follow the plan and the purpose of God, there is favor for you on that path of obedience. See, the children of Israel could have chosen not to listen to Moses. They could have chosen not to do what Moses instructed them to do. And if they had not, they would not have received the favor. They'd have died in Egypt. But yet, they heard the word of the Lord. They followed the voice of God. 
They obeyed it, and they did according to the word of Moses. And when they did, what happened? They received the favor of God. They received the jewels. They received the silver and the gold, and they went out of Egypt. Praise be unto God. Were delivered from the hand of bondage. Now let's go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105, we'll begin with verse 36. Now, the psalmist here rehearses the signs and the wonders, the plagues that came upon the Egyptians. Talks about the frogs, the flies, the lice, the locusts, caterpillars, and how they ate up the land. But the last one, it says, verse 36... He smote also all the firstborn in the land, in their land, the chief of all their strength. And verse 37, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Think of it. Approximately a million to two two million people. Some scholars say two million. Some say more. Some say less. Either way, a lot of people. And if you can get a million people together... And they, none is, are feeble or weak or sickly. And everybody's blessed and prosperous. Amen. Bling, bling here and there and everywhere. Praise God. You know, the blessing of the Lord has come. Amen. And so here we go. He's, they're coming out of Egypt. Not one feeble person, not one weak or sickly person among their tribes. They're coming out blessed. And what David is doing, the psalmist is doing, is he is rehearsing what God has done for the people of God. And you need to rehearse in the Word what God has done for the people of God. These are great testimonies of faith of what God has done for people who believed, who received miracles of God. And so he's rehearsing the miracle power of God, God's grace on people's lives. And then, of course, you've got to rehearse not only what God did for others, but you need to rehearse what God has done for you. You need to remember what the Lord has done for you and how God has blessed you. Many times God has healed you or God has delivered you and God has set you free and God has given you a word in season and God has established you and God has preserved your children and God has preserved your marriage and all kinds of wonderful things have happened in your life. You don't want to ever forget the good things that God has done for you. Sometimes our success is our greatest test. My pastor, B.B. Hankin, said he's in heaven today, but he said success is the greatest test. Sometimes we think that our greatest test is when we're under pressure and things have come at us this way. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, and they've come from all different directions, and it seems like the pressure is on everywhere we turn. We don't know what to do, but thank God, under that pressure, what do you do? You go to the Word. Isn't that right? You pray. It causes you to pray. It causes you to press into God. And so when you press into God, you'll find answers. You'll find direction. You'll find clarity. You'll find understanding. You'll find revelation. And you'll find hope for your soul. You'll find uh, a faith in your heart. Praise be unto God because you're pressing to God. But sometimes when everything's going well, you know, your house is good. You know, you're doing well in your home. You're doing well with your kids, your wife, and your job, and you're prospering. You're succeeding, and it seems like everything is doing well. Sometimes people kind of forget God. They forget all the good things God has done for them. Certainly, we don't want you to do that. Praise God. Always remember what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember when he did that. Remember that word that he gave you. And remember how he performed his word in your life. And remember how he healed you. And remember how he restored you. Remember how he took you out of poverty and and, and lack and brought you up and stepped you up in life. Praise be unto God. Remember it was the Lord's blessing upon your life. And rehearse those things in your heart and meditate upon those things every day of your life. Thank God. How many can say God's been good to me? 
He brought them forth with silver and gold. And David is rehearsing it. He brought them forth with silver and gold. Not one feeble person, a weak or sickly person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for fear of them fell upon them. What? Because of the plagues. Egypt was glad when they left town. Here, take my jewels. Take my silver. Take my gold. Just please leave. Take the flies with you. Take the frogs with you. Take the locusts with you. Come on, church. Take those dead fish with you. Oh, come on. Of course, they didn't take all that stuff with them, but you understand, they just wanted them out of Egypt. Because there's a mercy side of God and there's a wrath side of God. And they weren't experiencing the mercy side right now. So they just said, would you please leave? And finally, Pharaoh, after hardening his heart, he finally said, go. Leave. You can go. Egypt was glad when they departed for the fear of them. So we need to maintain some reverence for God. You know, in the church world, sometimes we've almost forgotten that God's still God. We kind of think we can do anything and there is no consequence. No, whatever a man sows is what you reap. If you sow good seed, you get a good harvest. If you sow a a positive seed, you get a positive harvest. If you sow bad seed, you get a bad harvest. I mean, it's not really too hard to figure out. You sow sin, you reap corruption. So if you sow the right seed, you get the right harvest. Now, in this case, they were glad for them to leave. So we need to maintain some fear of God. How many are with me today? Reverence for God. For God, not meaning that you're afraid of God, that God's going to smack you upside the head. No, God loves you. But sin will destroy your life. And God has already told us and warned us, so we ought to be smart enough to wise up and say, Yes, sir. Got that. Amen? So then, let's go on. He spread a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night. So in the daytime, he put a cloud over them so they didn't get uh, burned in the desert. At the night, he lit a fire so they could, uh, they could be warm. So God was taking care of them in the day, in the night. See, God can take care of you when it's night, when it's day, when it's dark, and when it's light, when it looks good, and when it looks bad. If it's a dark day in your life, God can take care of you. There's a fire that can warm your soul. There's a fire that can warm you in the presence of God and keep you and preserve you when things are not looking good, knowing that God's favor and payday is coming your way. It's coming to your life. You might as well cheer up. Praise God. God is on your side. And God loves you and cares about you. If you'll abide in the warmth of his presence, you'll find a word from God right in the middle of a dark night. Praise God. When Paul and Silas were in that Philippian jail, it was dark as could be. They were in the, in the deepest, darkest place of the Philippian jail. But at midnight, in the darkest hour, they prayed and they sang praises unto God. And it says the prisoners heard them. And God shook that Philippian jail and knocked the doors open. They flung open and everyone's bands were loose and they were delivered. If God can do it for the apostle Paul, God can do it for you. If God if God can do it for, an, for the children of Israel in a strange land, God can do it for you. If God can prosper them, God can prosper you. If God can deliver them from their afflictions, God can deliver you from all of your affliction. Praise be unto God. All he needs is a voice of faith, a cry of faith that comes out of the heart of a man of God or woman of God, a believer who will ra- rise up on the inside and say, God, hear my voice. Hear my cry. God, hear me today. I believe that your favor is on my life. I believe that heaven's favor and God's best blessings are awaiting me today. Hallelujah. How many expecting people do I have in the house? Everything's covered. A cloud for covering in the day, a fire to give light in the night. And the people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. Right in the middle of the desert, God rained manna right out of heaven. Pretty good program. Amen. Heaven's blessing just fell right out of heaven. Then they were complaining about that light bread and what they didn't know, it was wonder bread. 
Build your body in all ways. Not just 12 ways. God had given them manna. It's whatever you need. That's what manna is. It's whatever you need in your body. Manna was everything that they need to, to suffice and was sufficient for their maintaining healthy bodies. But they started complaining. So, okay, we'll give you some quail. Send them some quail. Mercy. Mercy quail flew in. <laughs> Verse 41. And he opened the rock and waters gushed out. Sounds like a miracle after miracle, doesn't it? Waters gushed out of the rock, and they ran in dry places. They're in the desert. There is no water, but God gave them water out of the rock. God's given you some water out of a rock. When it seemed like there was no way, God gave you some water. If you need healing today, there's some water that can come out of the rock, and Jesus is the rock. Hallelujah. They can flood your heart, flood your mind, flood your body, flood your home with the waters of God. I mean, it's okay for your house to get flooded with the water of life. Hallelujah. So these waters are for your blessing. And so heaven is open. The blessing is flowing. And why is it? Verse 42, for he remembered his holy promise in Abraham his servant. For God remembered. What did he remember? His holy promise. And he remembered Abraham, his servant. Listen, if you be Christ, Galatians 3 says, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. If you belong to Jesus today, if you're a child of God, then you're an heir of God. You are a child of Abraham. You're an heir of the promise of God. And so God will fulfill his promise. God has not forgotten you. You're still in the lineage. I said you're still in the lineage. God remembered Abraham and his holy promise. And that's why he did this for them. Well, if he did that for them, he'll do something for you. May not be the same thing you need, but God has a plan for you, and grace is towards you. And he brought forth his people with joy. So they were a happy bunch. He brought forth his people with joy, and it's chosen with gladness. God has chosen you in him before the foundation of the world. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You're different. You stand out in the crowd. Hallelujah. You ought to be a head above. You understand? You ought to have a different mentality. You ought to think different, talk different, walk different, act different, live different, so that you stand out and you hold up a standard. Some people think, the only way I'm going to get faith is if I do what they do. I just saw on Fox News this lady, you know, her, her idea was that you just go ahead and have sex with people so that'll promote you. Well, that's a foolish way to go up because they don't know that one man can sit you down as fast as one man can lift you up. That was destroying her life eventually. And so she's promoting that. Well, you know, to have sex with them, to get a promotion. Shouldn't take too much spiritual integrity to figure out that's not right. But listen, you don't have to do what they do to go where God wants you to go. The way you go where God wants you to go is you submit yourself to God and to His Word and you do what is right before God. Hallelujah to Jesus. When you follow the plan and purpose of God, there is favor for you on that path of obedience. I said there's favor for you on that path of obedience. Friend, if you will obey God, if you'll lift up a standard in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation, if you'll do the right thing at the right time with the right people and you'll be in the right place, praise God, God can promote you and God can lift you up and God can get you where you need to be. God has a plan for your life and the devil can't set you down. Hallelujah. I said if God lifts you up, the devil can set you down. If God positions you, the devil can't take you out. Praise be unto God. The safest place for you to be is in the middle of God's will for your life. I said the safest place is in the middle of the will of God for your life. God's favor is on you when you obey him. Are you hearing me today? He said he brought forth his people with joy and is chosen with what? So when you show up at work, you ought to be happy. Glory to God. You ought to have a smile on your face. This is a good day. Don't come in there complaining. Come in there rejoicing. Hallelujah. It's a good day. 
When you leave work, you ought to be rejoicing. When you go home, you ought to be rejoicing. When you greet your husband, it's a happy day. It was a good day, praise God. So, you know what I went through today. Come on, that's not your first word. Your first word, say, thank you, Jesus. Or, so good to see you. God is a good God. Amen. Would you say, well, it was a rough day, Pastor? Well, cheer up. Hallelujah. <laughs> On the way home, rejoice in the Lord. When you're sitting in traffic, don't worry about how long it's going to take you. Just thank God that his presence is in your car. Amen. And tomorrow will be a better day. Hallelujah. Because tomorrow just might be your payday. I said tomorrow just might be your payday. A faithful man will abound with blessing. If you'll stay faithful, if you'll endure right through the storm, and if you'll be steadfast, there's payday coming your way. God has a plan of blessing for your life. Sometimes people get weary and well-doing, and they quit right when they're close. Don't you know the devil is trying to trip you up and try to get you off course? You just stay steady. God's blessing is waiting, you, waiting on you on your path of obedience. It's coming your way, and you're blessed every day. Amen? And he gave them the lands of the heathen, verse 44, and they inherited the labor of the people. So, uh, you know, when they're selling, you might be buying. Hallelujah. They're selling cheap because they need to get out. Might be your time. They inherited the labor of the people that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to chapter or 106, verse 4. Remember me. David says, remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. In other words, the favor that you put on the children of Israel. God, remember me with that favor. And I can tell you, God remembers you. He, he remembers his covenant. The scripture says in the same chapter, of chapter uh, 105, he says he remembers his covenant to a thousand generations. God is remembering Abraham and his servant, and he is also remembering you. Remember me with favor. How do you want God to remember you? You want God to remember you like you're a person of obedience and that his favor is on you. That thou bearest unto thy people and visit me with thy salvation. In other words, show up, God, with your salvation, with your deliverance, just like you did with the children of Israel. Give me a word in season. Give me a word of faith. Give me confidence and assurance. And, Lord, I'll do what you say. And so what happened was God visited them and God will visit you. That I may see the good of thy chosen. That I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation. And may glory with thine inheritance. Friend, you can see the good of the chosen of God. You can see the blessing of the Lord. You can rejoice in the goodness of God. You can experience the inheritance of God. God's blessings are waiting for you. This is a year of favor and blessing. And payday is coming to you. You just expect it every day. I'm blessed. When I go to work, I'm blessed. When I come home, I'm blessed. When I show up at that business deal, I'm blessed. When I leave, I'm blessed. You say, what if they didn't? didn't buy it, somebody else will. Praise God. Hey, God says you're blessed, and the favor of God is on your life. God has set you up, and there is plan, blessing on your path of obedience. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, you can call on Jesus. You can call on Him for your salvation. Salvation is a gift. It's not something you have to work for or you have to earn by your own merits. It's something that you receive by simple faith in the fact that Jesus died for your sin and that God raised Him again from the dead. Just pray this simple prayer right now and call on the name of Jesus. Say, Dear God, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for my sin, and that you raised Him again from the dead. I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Friend, if you prayed that prayer today, you are saved. You're a child of God. God is your Father, and He has a great plan for your future. Give us a call today at the number on your screen. We want to send you a book free of charge with no obligation on your part. It's our desire to be a help to you in your spiritual life, and we believe the best years of your life are ahead. 
When the angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary, he said, you are highly favored. You're blessed among women. You as a believer in Jesus Christ who put your faith in him, today you are blessed. You are highly favored. We know from Psalm 5 that the scripture says that he will bless the righteous, that he will uh, encompass them or he will surround them with favor. God has a good plan for your life and he wants the best for you. Buy these two collaborative sets of four CDs or four DVDs, Blessed and Highly Favored and Living in God's Favor. Normally each price to $24 for CDs and $32 for DVDs. Order now and receive 20% off. Plus, if you order both sets, you'll receive our special combination offer of 30% off savings. Learn what it means to have God's favor with titles like Blessed and Highly Favored, Favor in Their Sight, Satisfied with Favor, and Living in God's Favor. God has an awesome plan for your life. So learn to step up and into His favor today and never look back. This is your year of favor and unlimited blessing. God's favor is for you. I encourage you today to order this series, Blessed and Highly Favored. Experience favor.